heard this morning from the Chief Justice of Singapore uh, on three areas where he feels that arbitral institutions can shape the future of arbitration. Um, that is costs, ethics and continuity. And from CIRB's point of view, I want to mention two of those, um, and that's ethics and continuity. Uh, firstly, ethics. Uh, as a professional chartered institute, CIRB offers education and training courses uh, for well-respected qualifications uh, and the highest training standards. And that means that when parties um, appoint a, an arbitrator who is a member of CIR, they know that they can expect uh, an arbitrator who has been well-trained. Um, also for uh, CIR, we have a professional uh, conduct committee um, and any report of complaints about one of our arbitrators um, who is a member of CIR is taken very seriously. Um, and that committee can investigate a complaint and, if necessary, uh, discipline, suspend um, or expel that member. And that should give parties some reassurance um, for uh, their arbitrator's conduct. The second area I'd uh, like to touch on um, is continuity. We hear a lot uh, in uh, arbitration about um, that training, there's, there's a wealth of training, but what young arbitrators are really missing is practical experience. Um, and that was one of the things that Chief Justice was talking about this morning. CIR has introduced a mentoring scheme to help young professionals launch their career. We also support uh, the Chief Justice's uh, recommendation that uh, young professionals should get some practical experience and that that should be through seasoned practitioners looking for ways that they can help the younger generation to um, observe uh, hearings and to work out what it is that parties want from arbitrators. And, and at the very least, uh, young professionals should be looking to launch their careers by undertaking uh, professional training courses such as those run by CIR.